Hello my friends, it is time for my November wrap up. The month has come to an end. I did not read nearly as much as I wanted to read. I'm actually gonna try and film this all in one take. I don't think it's gonna work out just because I have unfortunately been very, very busy this past month. I put a lot on my plate, but I somehow didn't think I really put that much on my plate. And so I had all these like lofty goals of climbathon and reading, you know, so many books. And a lot of that did not work out. I still read a, like good books and a good amount of books. Um, but not necessarily all the ones that I wanted to read. December is probably going to be even worse. There's even more things that I'm doing and I'm just very busy and very overwhelmed and I don't love it. This is not a state that I like to be in. But I'm going to talk to you guys about the books that I read for Climathon. I also read two books that were not for Climathon, which I will talk about at the end. And then I'm in the middle of a couple of books. So I'm going to mention those because there is like Climathon overlap in there. If you guys saw my Climathon sort of vlog video that I posted a little while ago, I essentially haven't really read since I finished filming that video. <laughs> it was kind of like I finished filming that video, I edited it, edited it, I really hate saying that, I edited it and posted it and then I've read like seven pages since that video. Maybe, maybe a little bit more, I'm exaggerating, but um, it has not been a bit, very big reading week for me, let alone a reading month for me. But let's get into it. So the books that I read for the Climathon first, I will have timestamps time stamps down below so you can like flick through if you want to hear me talk about a specific book. But the first book that I finished for the Climathon was A Honeybee Heart Has Five Openings. This was a fantastic book. It's a nonfiction book that was talking about a woman who was living in England and she'd kind of been like bouncing around her entire life was kind of like with her career, friends, like all around the place. And she she ended up living with one of her friends. She had a roommate and she kind of went through like a midlife crisis and decided to start keeping bees in her house in England. And um, she had like had previous experience in terms of beekeeping. She had a friend who was a beekeeper and she would help him out once in a while, but she had never sort of like tended to her own hive, I guess. And so you watch her kind of go through the process of really diving in and like reading lots of books and articles about how to take care of bees and the different uh, like kind of ideas and strategies that different beekeepers have. And yeah, like you like watch her research process essentially. And then you also reach her, watch her finding a community of beekeepers as well. They have like, I think it's monthly or bi-monthly meetings where all the beekeepers in the area, they meet up together and they like swap tips and, you know, buy different like bee houses from each other and all of these things. And yeah, so you just essentially watch her as she is learning how to be a beekeeper, like a self-sufficient on her own beekeeper, not as someone helping. And then you watch her set up her hive and then all the different emotions that she has and observing the bees and the bee behavior. And I really liked it. You learn quite a lot about bees in terms of like actual facts about bees and their habits and how they function and all of that. But then you also just watch her kind of go through this emotional journey of kind of discovering herself through her bees as well. <laughs> so I really liked it. If you're interested in bees, this is a book that I would definitely recommend. And also if you just want some like fun facts about bees and also if you want just a good memoir. Honestly, it kind of like checked a lot of boxes for me. I really like this book. Um, then I ended up reading Ducks, Two Years in the Oil Sands. This was for the prompt, I think for Climathon, uh, a book set in or around water. <laughs> This book was not that at all. I thought this book was going to be a little bit different based on the synopsis. Um, it was actually not super climate focused. So it's okay, let, let me backtrack. So this is a graphic novel. I, I really actually do recommend this book. I think it's a fantastic graphic novel in and of itself. I just don't think it was the perfect book to read for the climathon, unfortunately. But this book uh, is about a woman who lives on the east coast of Canada and she graduates university. She has a bunch of student debt and she decides to go work in the oil field in Alberta. I believe it was in Alberta because she moved around a little bit, but I believe it was in Alberta, also in Canada, <clears throat> which is kind of like an area of Canada. If you're not from Canada, or you, if you don't know, it's like where the oil is, where the money is, where the oil is, the well-paying jobs. So a lot of people go up there um, to make a bunch of cash, essentially. And then they either come back or they don't because they just end up staying there because the money is so good. And so I guess it, it did talk about climate more so near the end i think so it isn't once again let me backtrack so essentially this woman it's her like personal memoir told in a graphic novel format and it's her moving from the east coast over to the oil fields and then kind of going around back and forth and most i would say like the main theme of this book is like the sexism that happens to her because it is a very very male dominated industry um there's not a lot of like ways that she can protect herself, I suppose, um, like physically and emotionally. And so you watch her as she is struggling through this in like a very male dominated environment and not even just like a male dominated environment that is like in regular society where, you know, there is exposure to like men and women outside of work because a lot of these kind of like oil camps 
you're by yourself. So if you're working with like a hundred people, those are the only hundred people you see, except for on your days off, which some people don't even leave the camps on their days off. They're just always there. So you you know, you have whatever, a hundred men and like two women. It's not a great dynamic, right? Anyways, so a lot of it deals with that specifically. And then at the end, there is more of a touch on in terms of like the climate crisis and what's happening to the animals that are in those areas uh, where the oil fields are. And then sort of, <laughs> there was almost like a, and like the graphic novel ended and then there was like an attachment with just like words where she talked a lot more about like the actual climate impact of the oil fields. So it did tie in at the end to the climate crisis, but generally speaking, the book was more about uh, being a woman in a very, very male dominated industry that's kind of like in the middle of nowhere. Very fascinating read. I think also as someone who is like Canadian and who had quite a lot of friends that actually went up to the oil fields and it's, it's like a very... I guess like normal thing to do in Canada, like especially in areas where there isn't a lot of other work, uh, you kind of like go up north as we would say and make a bunch of cash and then come back. So I found it really interesting <laughs> in terms of like the climate crisis, not necessarily, but overall I think it was a really good memoir. And I read The Breath of a Whale. I actually didn't love this book. I don't think that there was inherently anything wrong with it. I think I just didn't really connect with the writing. Uh, this woman, she used to be a scientist where she would study like whales and the ocean. I forget specifically what she was doing, but um, she was studying the thing that kind of like changed her career. She was a scientist and she was studying the effect of sonar, I believe, on whales and like the communication, echolocation, is that what it's called, of whales. And she was, her and a group of other scientists were studying there was like an area where the US Army was testing some sort of like military ships, I guess. Um, and they were there independently trying to see what like the sonar would, the effect of the Army's sonar would have in terms of like the whale, the whales, and like if they would still be able to communicate and find each other. And like staggeringly, they were not able to. Like essentially, the second that the US Army started testing the whale and like that pod. It was a disaster like it, it, they were just not able to communicate anymore and she was you know then talking to the u.s army or whoever like the representative was being like hey this is like very detrimental to the whale population and they essentially didn't care and so she realized that she as someone who wanted to be saving these creatures these these whales specifically she her her like time would not be spent best as a scientist because people were kind of like not taking her seriously as a scientist like they just didn't care about the science essentially um and so she decided to become an activist and so it kind of it it was i think it was a good book in the sense that it had a lot of facts like i did learn a lot about whales that i had no clue about um i was not very well versed in terms of whales <laughs> at all actually and she does spend most of the time in the pacific northwest which is where i'm originally from so that was really cool to see kind of like learning more also about like the nature and like the water habitats of that area that I didn't know about. And her story is interesting, but I just, I did not connect with her writing for whatever reason. Like there was a lot of things that would have made it a good book for me. Like you're learning about the ocean. I'm learning about a place that is like very near and dear to my heart. I'm learning about like a scientist turned activist, you know, this like incredible woman who's doing these like really cool things. And I just did not connect with it, unfortunately. Um, that's not to say it was a bad book. I think just something in the writing, the writing in me, we were not, we were not gelling, you know? Then I read The Heartbeat of Trees. And now this is a man whose writing I absolutely love. He just talks so beautifully about nature and like the interconnectedness of nature. Something that I really liked about this book is that he addressed head on essentially how wild it sounds that, you know, trees can communicate with each other and that there are these like ecosystems that that are that seem magical essentially right like trees talking to each other in whatever way that they talk to each other seems like it is something out of a fantasy story but it's not and so like in his previous book he had talked about you know like the the mycelium and and the root systems and everything of these trees and like how they all work together as an ecosystem and it kind of sounded woo woo um but since then there's been a lot more like research and science that has been coming out and so even though it sounds kind of woo-woo, it's becoming less and less woo-woo because we're trying to find like these like scientific ways to explain this phenomena. In this book, I feel like he also talked more about the climate crisis and a lot more about like old growth forests and what different people in different communities around the world are doing in terms of trying to save these trees because, you know, cutting down a 500 year old tree and replanting it these two things are not equal right so we talked a lot about like sort of like specific areas of the world specific groups and what they are doing to try to save these trees 
and then also just makes you fall in love with trees <laughs> and like if you have an ounce of loving trees I think you will love this book because he just he writes in such a captivating way and he really just on paper makes me feel more connected to nature and to trees and just like the beauty of these incredible incredible plants so those are all the books that I actually read for the climathon so I finished reading I guess four books for the climathon i was supposed to read 10 i finished four the ones that i talked about on my tbr i still do want to read i just don't know when i'm going to get to them i hopefully at least one or two of them i will finish this month i don't know i do have three books from the climathon that i'm in the middle of which are the exact same three books that i was in the middle of during the vlog so i'm in the middle of fresh banana leaves healing indigenous landscapes through indigenous science I'm obsessed with this book. I really have not made much more progress. I think I just finished the chapter. Yeah, I'm on the beginning of chapter six now. I have not tackled this essentially at all. I've made a little bit more progress in all we can save. I'm quite I'm quite close to the end. Um, as you can see, there's not too, too much left. This is a book that's a little bit easier for me because some of these essays will be like two pages or there'll be a poem or something. So I can kind of like knock it out and be like less stressed about it. Whereas a book like this, I feel like I really have to sit down and like focus on it. So hopefully all we can save, I can finish in the next couple of days, but I have not been prioritizing it at all. I've not been prioritizing any reading at all. And the other book, um, oh, the other audio book that I'm currently listening to is The Seed Keeper, which was also for the Climathon. Have not made any progress on that. I don't know, just haven't been doing anything where it is like conducive to listening to an audiobook recently. So that is, good. I feel like The Seed Keeper, these two books and The Seed Keeper, I will, I don't want to say for sure finish in December, but like most likely finish in December. The other book that I'm currently reading is Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. I actually ruined this book yesterday. <laughs> um, I left it outside and it got water damage because it started torrentially raining. Um, I don't know if you can see, it's like a little bit, uh, well, it's not in perfect condition anymore. It used to be in perfect condition. So Brandon, I apologize. <laughs> But it is actually a really good book. I'm in the middle of this. I'm reading this with my friend Emily. We are both enjoying it. Uh, I think we're both enjoying it more than we expected to. But this is also something I have not really been prioritizing. But I can see myself finishing this in December because it's not super... It's not like... It, it's really dense, I suppose. It's taking like a lot more brain power than I thought it would. But it's at the same time somehow easier and more relatable than I expected it to be. Like it's not this like super, super scary philosophy textbook, you know. Um, this this version also has like actual annotations at the bottom, which I haven't been reading every single one of them, but I have been reading most of them. Sometimes I'm just like so engrossed in the actual text that I forgot forget to look at the annotations. But anyways, so these <laughs> three books I'm currently in the middle of, as well as The Seed Keeper on audio. And then I have two more books that I read in November that had nothing to do with the Climathon, completely separate. This one was such a mood read and I finished it in essentially two days. I had a fantastic time reading it and it is Sorrow and Bliss. I love this book. Let me just read you the flap. Should I read you the flap? The flap is actually quite long. So we are uh, put into the story and into the mind of a 40 something, I think, no, she's just turned 40 year old woman who is married uh, you find out right at the beginning that she is going to be going through a divorce and she's moving back in with her parents, her kind of like bohemian hippie parents who were not always exactly there for her as a child. Uh, she has a sister as well and uh, kind of like an aunt and uncle that were taking care of her more when she was a child because her parents were, like I said, not really fully there emotionally for her. Um, her however, her husband seems like an angel. They were childhood friends. They ended up getting married. And I loved this book the book is told from kind of not kind of it's told from the perspective of the main character who is like really mean to people around her <laughs> she's like very mean kind of abusive to people she does not uh do well with criticism um she's always one that is like criticizing she gets angry very very easily and you're watching her as she's telling about her present day but also like flashbacks to her entire life history between like her family as well as her uh, now ex-husband and you're watching all of these different scenarios where she was just so mean. Um, you end up finding out at the end that she has a mental disorder, which they never actually disclose what it is. The author said, I was reading a little bit about it and the author said she didn't want anyone to like peg, you know, like this, these are symptoms of these mental disorders or anything like that. Um, so it, it literally just like crossed out in the book once she's like diagnosed with something. Um, but it just felt 
so real and what i really liked about it too is you watch as this main character is sort of having these like grievances towards these people for so many years and she has this like story wrapped up in her own head of like why people are acting with it they're acting and you know she only is seeing her i guess perspective and then at the end of the book you start to see especially like her mom's perspective and her ex-husband's perspective as she's having like these conversations with her as well as her sister actually it was captivating like i actually i dog-eared this book for whatever reason sometimes i dog ear sometimes i sticky note i don't know but i did sticky note one thing let me read it to you martha he said afterwards lying next to me everything is broken and messed up and completely fine that is what life is it's only the ratios that change usually on their own as soon as you think that's it it's going to be like this forever they change again that was her husband it read really easy it was a very easy book to read but like super super impactful there was so many things that i underlined in here it was just you could like feel this character's emotions and I loved it. I, I, I like knew I needed to read this. I was like looking at it on my bookshelf, looking at all my climbathon books. And I was like, no, this is this, for some reason this is calling me. And it called me for a good reason because I, I devoured it completely. I was so captivated by it. Fantastic book, really recommend it. And then I tackled a Toni Morrison book. <laughs> I'm so happy. This was on, and this was on my like, want to read by the end of 2022 TBR, which I don't know if that TBR is gonna make it very well but I did get through Sula and I had a very weird experience with this, which has nothing to do with the book. But as I was reading this and I was texting my friend Mame about this, I was like, I've read this book before <laughs> and I don't know when or how or anything like that. I purchased this book when I was in Canada this year. So in like May or June of this year is when I purchased it. Um, I actually have the receipt in here, but it doesn't really matter. I purchased it. Okay. I purchased it May 14th. I have not read this book since May 14th, but I, I have read this book at some point in my life, maybe 10 years ago. I don't know when or how, doesn't really matter. I really like this book. This was a book where at times I did not really understand what was going on. It tells us, okay, it tells the story of these two uh, girls who are friends and then they grow up to be women. One of them stays in like their hometown. One of them goes away from her hometown and then she ends up coming back. And the one that, that leaves and then comes back is kind of viewed in like a negative light by the people that are, that have always been in that, in that city. Um, of like the hometown, I guess, where these two uh, girls met when they were girls who are now women. Oh my gosh. Um, and so you watch this story. It's kind of like a friendship story, but also family story because there's like family dynamics and family dramas and stuff that happen in this. And like I said, there was moments where I really did not understand what was going on. I think that Toni Morrison has like a very specific way of writing. However, it was captivating. I don't know if you've had that experience before where you're reading something and you're a little bit confused, but like it feels good. <laughs> That's what this book felt like for me. Um, I think overall the story was really good, but there were definitely moments where I, I was a little bit confused, but I just kept going. I just kept going and I did really enjoy it. Okay, that is my November wrap up. I did actually read quite a lot of books. Um, I just feel like I did not read a lot for a climbathon, which is upsetting to me, but there is always next time and there's always December. I am someone who like reads climatey, naturey books throughout the year anyways, uh, but this, this month just kind of got away from me. I don't know where it went, honestly. And December is already a couple days in and it's just, it's just a stressful time. I'm not a huge fan of it, but let me know what your favorite book was that you read in November. I already forgot what month it was. Honestly, I think my favorite book was actually Sorrow and Bliss. And I think my favorite book out of Climathon is this one even though i haven't finished this one yet but i think that will be my favorite book out of climathon but this one it just this book just captivated me so much it was amazing i guess i'm gonna have to edit this video a little bit that's okay um i hope you guys are all having a wonderful day thank you guys so much as always for liking for commenting for subscribing it all means the world to me and i will see you again in the next one